Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, thank you for staying on a Friday afternoon. I see the room's very full, so thanks so much. My name is Sherry Noonan. I'm the CEO and uh, co-founder of Rialto Markets, and we're going to be speaking about, ooh, good, better? Can everyone hear me? We're gonna be speaking about tokenized real world assets, the past, the present, and the future. And before we get going, I would just like to thank um, eDaily and Flip for putting on this, this wonderful conference. But I'd also like to thank the translators. I've been so impressed <laughs> listening to the translation throughout this conference. So thank you to everyone who helped put on the conference and for everything that you do. So here we go. My name is Sherry Noonan. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Rialto Markets. And really my background for the last 25-ish or more years has been in electronic trading. I worked in electronic trading helping to bring a lot of the voice markets in the United States from the voice and pits and, and the physical exchanges onto the computer systems, elim eliminating a lot of the runners and making the processes much more operationally efficient. So what um, we're doing now, in around 2016, I founded Rialto Markets, and I really saw an opportunity to take a lot of the efficiencies that were gained in the public equity markets and move those into private markets and that those markets were really ready to, to scale. So Rialto Markets is a FINRA member broker-dealer. We also operate an alternative trading system and we do that um, in private markets, and we also do it in traditional form, but also in digital or blockchain-based form. So really, you know, what we're looking to do is to help scale private markets, and sort of the tagline is bringing private markets to the public, and we'll go through some of the use cases today that we work on and that we're getting ready to work on. So when we're talking about the history of real-world assets and tokenization, I'm going to take everyone all the way back to the beginning. <laughs> and all the way back to the beginning is really the history. In, you know, for, for much of our collective history, we really have had wealth accumulation through physical, real-world assets. And a lot of these assets were, you know, were uh, confirmed through land deeds, through physical stock certificates or other certificates, something physical. And obviously that, that helped with the, the keeping of the actual investment, but was very challenging in terms of if there were issues, if you know, made really hindered a lot of the scalability. So we're gonna fast forward way up in time to the electronification of public markets. So um, around you know, the 1980s, 1990s, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the markets that you have seen globally have begun to, in the early 2000s, begin to shift dramatically with the advent of really the internet and a lot of other digital technology. So this part, this really marked the beginning of a significant digital transformation. And you know, a lot of the national um, exchanges tran transitioned away from voice-based systems to electronic platform, and it really increased both speed and scale. So the time to execute decreased by 99%, and really the cost in some places decreased by 100%. And this shift revolutionized not only trading, but also paved the way for some other innovative products. And the first significant wave of digitization was the emergence of real estate investment trusts, or REITs, and exchange-traded funds. And I know throughout the last few days, people have talked about REITs and ETFs and that innovation. And you know, it really made uh, these investments that were traditionally not accessible and not liquid much more liquid, much more accessible for everyday um, investors. And that was really the big innovation there opening up these tools and allowing these tools to become available to retail investors for the first time, and allowing them to buy a bundle of stocks or invest in a theme in a way that was really balanced in, in having a portfolio. So with that, we now have the rise of tokenization and really the emergence of tokenization. 
So, you know, tokenization is obviously, and we've been speaking about this for the, the last two days, so I won't um, begin with what tokenization is and, and sort of I'm going to go to the, to the more advanced um, discussion, but it's, it really allowed um, the, you know, blockchain technology and then tokenization through that really allowed for a lot of the next leap forward in finance and asset management. And importantly, there were really three things. Um, we, we talk about this a lot, but I think fundamentally it's the operational efficiency, the technical efficiency to really take current bespoke paper-based type of um, systems and processes and digitize both the data and the process, and it enables faster, more cost-effective transactions. And then you've got other things that can automatically happen that really reduce the operating time I remember you know, my time in finance uh, working on a, a trading desk, corporate actions and other things like that were always very, very challenging and caused a lot of issues as well as reconciliations. So that really reduces the need for additional operational processes and those reconciliations. Secondly, tokenization really allows financial instruments and other things to be deconstructed. And that's really broken into various components across economic governance and utility rights. And I think this is really important as we go into the future of finance and what we're doing in terms of private markets because it allows asset owners and investors and the, the, the users of, of these various um, assets to more closely align their interests and really create new and different financial products. And then obviously something that we've spoken about a lot over the last two days is tokenization really opens up scaling and new distribution networks. And so this allows um, you know, new people to both invest, so retail investors to invest in assets they wouldn't be able to otherwise invest in, but also importantly, it allows those people who may be um, you know, large uh, owners to have a diversified investor base, which really breaks up the risk around the investors in that product. So these three benefits really drive increased scale new product generation capabilities, which I think is critical, and then increased distribution networks for these products. So really today, when I talk about what Rialto Markets is doing today, we're in the practical application of tokenization in real world assets. So what are the things that we're seeing today? What are the active clients that we're working with today? Really, the, the first base case that we came across um, in, in what we do is working with marketplaces that deal in the fractionalization of everything, where companies are establishing marketplaces to sell slices of whether it's real estate or wine or art or cars or some sort of alternative asset to, in very small denominations, to um, retail investors, by and large. And what this allows for is, you know, the, the tokenization that we've worked with with these marketplaces and really digitization of the process increases a cost effective, provides a cost effective way for retail investors to invest in, in these assets that they otherwise would not be able to invest in. And, you know, what we're seeing is for a raise of, call it $10 million, 10,000 investors are able to participate or whatever the denomination is, it can go, some of our marketplaces have as low as $10 to invest in certain assets, which one, opens up to a brand new investor pool, but then two, a lot of the fractional marketplaces is where we're starting to see the early beginnings of secondary trading for these assets, because when you, you have smaller slices, usually you're looking to offload them in shorter time frames. So next then came, so that was really our first gen in terms of clients that we were working with, marketplaces we were working with, and it was building out the technical stack, the operational stack, and the regulatory stack for then those marketplaces to put their product into, and then really be more in a business development role in terms of cultivating their community, building out the business, and building out the investors that invest in those products. And I just want to take a moment and emphasize a lot of times when we talk about tokenization and um, you know, fractionalization, first and foremost, 
it's important to realize that, that whatever the product is, whatever the investment is, has to be a, a good investment. That's sort of table stakes. So, you know, this is really allowing good investments to find new investors, to help diversify risk profiles, and to um, allow people to diversify their portfolios above and beyond where they already are. So, you know, next what really came were more complex implementations for us, and these are all things that are live today and that, that we're doing today. So we really started creating new products with clients, and the first one was a carbon-based offset product, and what was really different with this one was we were, allowed, we were able to use blockchain technology to really embed that in the product and to provide a verification layer with, to, with the end projects that were being invested in. And so in this way, the investors could really keep much more real-time handle and real-time information on the end investment, the end project, and that gave them a lot more comfort and addressed one of the critical problems that's happening in the carbon-based offset market uh, today. So that's everything that, that we are working on now and today, and where are we going? So where we're going, if I can move, there we go. Where we're going today is actually really, really exciting. So, so we're working with clients in really two different verticals. The first I'll call is um, really brand awareness or community activation. And, you know, th this is a brand new world, and it's really about not just opening up new distribution networks, but it's about community engagement and how to leverage that community um, to activate it and strengthen the overall value of your brand, of, of the company's brand. And so I'll, I'll just go through some, some projects that we're currently working on and clients that we're currently working with that I find really interesting and exciting and very different from sort of version one of, of where we came from. So several people at the conference have talked about and mentioned, and it's very exciting, have, have talked about content-based tokens. And um, you know, we're working with several different entertainment companies to you know, work on everything from the sale of music royalties, which is fantastic, and being able to invest in that royalty stream and activating the fan base there, to movie studios that are working on project finance of individual movies and aligning um, you know, investors with the genre of movie or whatever the movie studio is themed as. And so that's all around creating, accumulating, and activating a fan base around, around a brand, around some sort of investment stream. The second one that is, is quite interesting to me is luxury brands. So we're working with a few luxury brands that are really evaluating new approaches in terms of building um, loyalty or new approaches to loyalty. And so a, a program that allows their most active clients or sort of that top, top segment of client base to have an, an investment capability that comes with benefits to that brand, whether it be early access to you know, the, the seasonal collection or days in the couture shop um, with you know, being able to have a one-on-one -on -one visit. So there are lots of different luxury brands that are really looking at and evaluating and saying, how can I take that top strata of client base and um, build upon it and create sort of this, this virtuous cycle. The last one I, I found really interesting, so we started working with a consumer goods, um, a consumer goods business. And really, we started working with them because uh, they have an innovation group. And their innovation group invests in various companies that are affiliated with or bring value to the overall parent company every year. And they were really looking for what else they could do. And so we, we spent a lot of time talking about different ways that we could, we could work together. And, and where we really ended up was a place that, that they could, you know, they're a very large conglomerate, have a really great brand. And they're investing in these smaller companies that are, that are adding to, to one of their verticals. 
So how could they work to get the overall community affiliated with their larger brand involved in helping to almost crowdsource those companies and those investments that resonate the most with the general public? And they could also invest in those, in those companies that they know are affiliated with the, larger, with the larger, bigger global company. So these are just some of the ways that we're working with larger brands and that um, I, I really feel that, that tokenization is contributing in a very different way than we may traditionally think to building the brands and activating communities. So we're also seeing an interest in, you know, I mentioned deconstruction of different rights, whether it's economic or the governance or ownership or utility. So two really interesting use cases. One, we're working with a large firm on power purchase agreements and being able to align some of the governance and economic rights with um, different communities involved in these power purchase agreements in a different way that isn't necessarily scalable um, through the traditional legal infrastructure. So if you went to a traditional investment bank, you could, you could get this structured in a certain way, but you wouldn't necessarily be able to cascade payments down to, let's say, um, you know, citizens of a particular community or a, a certain area. So we're, we're working on a project there. And then the last one is the private credit space. And I, I'm sure you've heard a lot about private credit over the last few years. It's grown quite tremendously, um, certainly over the last few years. And really, we're working with a group of, um, of firms to look at risk in the private credit area and allow for the pass-through of economic risk um, to different groups to avoid concentration of risk it, it, with certain firms or in certain areas. So these are two use cases of firms and, and um, projects that we're working on where it's more of the deconstruction of, of, the, uh, of the security and, and aligning different rights and, and uh, better aligning the different rights. So where are we going? So what we see in terms of emerging trends and where we're going, there are both some really interesting uh, trends and then also challenges. So when we look at the emerging trends, we definitely see that there is you know, a, a, some regulatory evolution. <laughs> I don't think a week goes by where, where we don't see regulatory evolution, it's certainly in our jurisdiction in the United States. And so we're definitely seeing the SEC you know, provide the framework and move towards um, you know, more of a framework around tokenized assets and that compliance and the investor protections that of course come with that. The second trend that we see is integration with traditional finance. And you know, we have, we've been very fortunate that with that regulatory evolution then comes mainstream firms. And so we're seeing some mainstream firms We've seen BlackRock, Wisdom Tree, Franklin Templeton, all within the last you know, year, year and a half, really announced new projects, new initiatives, and we'll continue to see that. We now are seeing some big banks, Goldman Sachs and others, that are really talking about how they're adopting this technology. And then the last trend that we're seeing is really tokenization extending to non-traditional areas like data and um, it begin innovating and aligning economic interests in new and different ways. And I find this really um, an interesting area to, to look at and uh, explore. Challenges. So in the emerging trends, we saw regulatory evolution. In the challenges, we see regulation as well, because much like in you know, electronic trading from 20 or 30 years ago, there were lots of jurisdictions that it took a number of cycles, a number of years to harmonize rules and to make sure that um, there were, you know, th that the rules were harmonized across jurisdictions. In the same way, we just have uneven regulatory uh, frameworks, and that harmonization is going to be required, and um, w that's going to be required as we get more global and as uh, as assets become uh, more of a globalized. Uh, globalized situation, I'll call it. <laughs> the second is uh, technical bottlenecks. 
which is you know, the need for reliable infrastructure, obviously, but really what we're talking about is interoperability between different systems and um, making sure that we don't hinder adoption with that. And then last, uh, trust issues. Obviously, you're gonna need security. Um, when we're talking about digital securities, um, no pun intended, but when we're talking about digital securities, those aren't bearer instruments, so, but you still need a reliable network and a, and a great deal of security around that to make sure that, that investors are confident. And then lastly, fragmentation. Fragmentation in the market really creates challenges in liquidity and standardization and makes it more difficult to navigate the overall market. And so, I will wrap it up there. Um, you know, what we're really seeing is that tokenization is revolutionizing asset management as well as just overall investment in alternatives or real world assets. We really do see a world where five or 10 years down the road, asset management is fundamentally changed um, from the traditional 60-40 portfolio um, to, to something new and different and more dynamic. And we definitely also see an outlook where there's broader adoption across different asset classes and integration with different financial um, regimes and, and jurisdictions. And then lastly, um, we're seeing new and different people. You know, some of the use cases I mentioned, luxury brands, other different types of companies are not the ones you might think of when you talk about tokenization in real world assets or financial services, but we're definitely seeing that evolution happen um, fairly quickly. So, thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, I welcome them. If not, I am here for uh, the rest of the afternoon, and thank you. <laughs>